Hello everyone, this is BioPhoenix here, and today's special topic is actually going to be a, vi a video response to a YouTuber named uh, Games of War. It's filled with a, Z, but with, with a Z at the end of it, by the way. And basically, he did a, a video recently just called um, Weird Names of Great Games, or something like that. So basically, you take a, a really weird looking name, but it's actually of a game that's really fucking good. And I actually thought this was interesting, considering the fact that I know a couple of games that I always found to have really weird names, but actually turned out to be pretty damn good in my opinion, so I'm going to take my little input onto it, and also I know a couple of other YouTubers that I know have done this as well, so I think I'm also just throwing my two cents into it. So, let's get the show started. Alright, so we're going to do it from oldest to newest for in system wise, so we're just going to start with the NES, and there's two games that I always found that I have in my collection that are really weird. And just so you know, I'm actually going to, I'm only doing the games that I own that I'm going to show off, and then I probably might do something at the end where I might make honorable mentions of games that I've played that have really weird names. But anyways, I'll get to that later though. So, the first game that, would, that I'd like to mention that I own would be... Faxanadu on the NES, and yes, this game, when I first got it, I had no idea how the fuck I was supposed to say it. I thought it was Faxandu, and Faxandu, well, it kind of sounds like Faxandu, but, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, this game, really good, but really challenging, though, but, and it also has a really weird name, so I thought I might as well include that, though. It's basically a, um, a side, um, or like a platformer type of thing. Well, actually, no, I shouldn't say it's a platformer. It's more of a, like, an action RPG sort of thing. But it's, like, side view. So, but yeah, it, I think it's actually pretty fun, though. It's actually kind of an overlooked game, but I think it's pretty good. So, And it also backs down to do. I have no idea what the fuck that means, but it's a weird name, and it kind of makes you go, huh? But, yeah, so I thought that was actually a good mention for that. Now, the other game on the NES, now this is a game that I've had for a very long time and I never knew what the fuck to think of it, and that is Defenders of, uh, Di Dinartian, Dinitron City. Now, I have no idea if this is based off, like, a show, a movie, or a comic book or anything, but I can tell you about this, that I only knew about it from this game, and, well, for one... The game isn't too bad. It's pretty decent, actually. I had some fun with it, even though it was kind of confusing of where to go, but I actually found it to be quite fun. But the main thing that is weird that, yeah, you know, the one word here that I had a hard time pronouncing, yeah, that kind of makes it sound weird. And then there's just all the characters in it. Like, I don't know if you can see it well in here, but see, like, you have, like, this one guy who can, like, attack by popping off his head. Then there's, like, this, like, lightning chick. And then you have this, like, one girl who has, like, a saw blade for legs, and then you have, like, a hammerhead dude, and then you have this green dog thing. Yeah, it's just fucking weird, but it, it's actually not too bad, though. It's just, it's something that I never actually hear people talk about, and I think it's actually done all right, though. But, yeah, I, it's interesting, all right. Fucking weird name, though. But that's the whole point of the video, so. All right, now, this is actually a game for the Master System. And this is actually a game that I've had for a very long time as well, but unfortunately I never played this just because of the fact that I don't have a master system and I found a bunch of games for really, really cheap. And But I have played an emulator of it though later on and oh my god, it's fucking great. And that is... Wise. Just wise. In fact, I didn't even know what the fuck to think of it. it was, I just thought it was just... Just the letter Y, and then just with an S at the end. But actually, if you actually do want to know what it actually is, it's supposed to be Y's the something of Omen, which is a... In fact, this is actually the YS series, if you ever heard of that. I know it's a pretty big RPG, and it was also an anime and all that type of good stuff, which is interesting. But yes, this was actually one of the early games that was made on, on the Sega Master System, and I just find it weird just because on the cartridge, it only just says... Wise, and to answer, I had no idea what the fuck I was, was going to suspect from a game just called Wise, when yet they could have just put in Wise, and um, I can't remember the full name of the title, but I just know it has the word Omen in it, in it, but it's actually a pretty good game, starter game, I must say, it's pretty impressive for its time, and also the Wise, there's actually a pretty good series, like I remember I played one of them on the NES before, and it was great, and 
Yeah, so I like, this is actually a pretty good mention, and yeah, by the way, in case, I don't know if you can read this, but it says 99 cents, and yeah, I put this game up for 99 cents, believe it or not, so, yeah, and there's no case, unfortunately, or else I would have brought that too, but no, it's just a cartridge. Now it's moved into the 16-bit area, and this is actually a game that I, I always found to be weird, but really fucking awesome, and that is... Zombies Eat My Neighbor on the Super Nintendo, and my god, this game is fucking fantastic. Like, I fucking love it. It's basically your Dead Rising of from the 16-bit era, but this is, I, I actually prefer this a hell of a lot better considering the fact that there's no fucking escort missions with the retarded AI. They just sit there and get themselves killed, but yes, this game, fucking awesome. Like, I love it, even though the name of it's kind of weird, because it's just like, Zombies Ate My Neighbor. But they didn't eat me. Yeah, I, I don't know what the fuck, but yeah, it, it's a good game. I, I really like it, and and it's actually, um, I know a lot of other people that actually like this game too, so I actually thought it was pretty great, because, you know, most people I know just wasn't really sure what to think of it, considering the fact that, well, what the fuck could you come up with a game called Zombies Ain't My Neighbor, seriously? But yeah, it's, it's actually pretty fucking awesome for a Konami game. Now, another game on the 16-bit era, but with its, um, rival, the Sega Genesis, we have Decap Attack. Wish the title of it's up there, not down here, but, yeah, anyway, Decap Attack, well, I just find it weird just because, well, Decap Attack, it, it's, I don't, it's just something that you don't hear every day, and then, also just the whole concept of the game is just weird too, where you're like this, like, mummy dude who has, like, who basically attacks by, like, using, he's throwing his own limbs, basically, and, like, kicking around his own head at, at the enemies, which is weird concept, but I'd say it's actually pretty fun, though. And I think it's actually pretty good for a, for a Sega Genesis game, so, I thought so this is actually another weird but great game, though, I find. Maybe not be as weird as the other ones, but it's, but I'd say it's weird enough to actually suit in, though. Alright. Now let's move into 64, and this is actually a game that I actually reviewed, so, uh, so, and, so anyway, let's just get it on, and that is Glover. Now, yes, I did review this game, and I actually, and if you guys have actually watched it, which, I don't know how many of you have, but, probably not many, but, because I've just started the whole reviewing thing, but, yeah, Glover, I thought it was a really good game, but the thing I find weird is just, well, what would you suspect, it's just, Glover, and then you have a glove guy, and then it's just, well, I don't know what to think for that, like, like, you don't know what the hell to expect, maybe some type of adventure game, but we don't, but what it actually is, is just, yeah, it's, it's a 3D platforming game where you have to defend the bull and all this shit, but it's actually pretty fun, though, at least I think it's really fun anyway, so that's why I'm thinking of, of it with this pile of games, because, well, for one, it's pretty weird title enough for it, just because, you know, Glover, and it actually kind of reminds me, the title of it kind of sounds like the movie, um, Flubber with, uh, Robin Williams, which, by the way, that was a really fucking weird movie, too, but, yeah, anyway, yeah, Glover, I think it's pretty weird enough to actually fit into this category. Alright, now let's move into the PS1. Now, there's one game I do have on my PS1 that I always thought that was pretty strange, and that is... Jade Cocoon on the PlayStation 1, and by the way, this is an RPG, and it's actually, and by the way, there's not two discs, there's only one, but the reason why there's two is because there's a demo disc in there for something, and what I can say about it is, yeah, it, the name of it's pretty weird, like, what the fuck is a Jade Cocoon, what, is it like a cocoon that's jade or something, like the color? Oh, I don't know about that, but I can tell you this, the game's very interesting. It's actually pretty similar. You're probably not going to believe me when I say it, though, is it's similar to Pokemon, but the difference is, is that when you catch po like these, well, no, I shouldn't say Pokemon, they're more of like creatures. When you catch these like creatures, you can actually join in the fight as like your, the trainer can join in the fight and like beat up like whatever other creatures that are out there. So it's more of like you're Ash or something, and you train Pokemon, but at the same time, you're also fighting other Pokemon physically, which is kind of morbid, but 
it's it's cool though. Like I think it's actually a pretty interesting game. It's pretty overlooked, I'd say, for what it is. Like I don't hear a lot of people mentioning it all the time, but anyway. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good game though. I I think it's pretty weird enough though, just because you know the concept, and then there's just the name too is weird enough, and even the front cover is pretty fucking weird with all the bubbles and shit. So yeah, it's that. Now, this is going to be a GameCube game, and this is actually one that I got from my last pickup video, or what one before actually, and that is Piano 3 Project Number on the GameCube, and yeah, all I have to say about it, it's weird because, well, it's pretty random, it's like PNO3, and Project Number is only the subtitle, because if you can see on the side of the case, it just says PNO3. And obviously, PN means project number, number three, but the thing that makes it weird is that it's pretty randomized, and trust me, when I was looking for this game, I could never remember the name of it, because I just remember it's like, oh, what's that game with the two letters and the one number, and it's on the GameCube, and yeah, I, I don't know, but, but yeah, basically you're like a robot, basically, kind of thing, and... I don't know why, it kind of, rem I don't know why, but the way how the girl in this game looks kind of reminded me of, um, Cosmos from, uh, fucking Xenosaga, which is a fantastic game, I, in my opinion, and I thought this was going to be something similar to it, so, yeah, basically, it's just weird because, you know, it's just something that I can never remember, now I do remember it since now that I have it, but before, when I was trying to look for it, I could never remember it. So, so that's why I think it's pretty weird, but, but it does make sense, though, when you actually play it. It's just when you look at it, it's just like, well, what the fuck? <laughs> now, one more game, at least that I own, and this is actually a PS3 game, so, it's from our generation, so it shouldn't be that hard to remember it, but except for the fact that its name just rolls off your tongue, and that is, Artoliko Quoga Nia of RCL. Yeah, it just rolls off your tongue, and as you can tell, it's made by NIS America, which... There's actually a lot of games that they make with really fucking weird names, like, for an example, there's Disagaya, and then there's Hyperdimension Neptunia, and then there's also that one I can never pronounce with the fucking... It starts with an A, and it's like, the something of our land. Like, I think there's the Alchemist of our land, and then there's the Adventurer of our land, but... Anyway, if you have played, like, any of these types of games, you would know what I'm talking about, but... Yes, this is an RPG, and... This is probably one of my favorite RPGs from this gen generation, one of them. Nah, I know that may be saying too much a lot, though, but... This is just what I think about it, though. I think it's really good, and... And, and just the weirdness just starts with the name, and then the gameplay, well... That's kind of weird, but the story is mainly the fact of where this game gets its really weirdness, though. Really fucked up and mind fucky, I find, but it's actually really fucking good, though. At least if you, if I said so myself. But yes, Artoliko Quoga Neil of RCL. Now, in case you're wondering where the fuck they came up with a title like this, actually, a part of the title is actually has to do with the... The game has its own language, and which is ba and apparently the their language is basically reverse Japanese, which is kind of weird when you think about it. But yeah, it's actually kind of interesting though how um, how they came up with their own language and then they kind of appeared to the title because the game series is called Artoliko and then then has like other stuff for the title. And, yeah, I I don't know what the fuck else to say about it, but I actually really do do like this though myself and. A lot, so... Okay. Those are all the games that I have with really fucking weird names, but now I'm probably going to be mentioning some honorable titles of games of really weird names but are actually really good of ones that I've played but I don't own yet, so check out for that. Welcome back, everyone, and I'm still going to be continuing this video with the weird names, great games, and... Um, this, by the way, this is going to be unscripted, so if I make any, like, air spaces or just any type of mistakes in here, well, I'll, I don't know if I'll be able to correct it there, but if I do, well, whatever. But anyway, this is just the way how I feel like doing it just for this video, considering that's how I do it with my, like, recording with my camera types of videos, but, oh well, anyway, let's get started, because this time I'm going to be naming some games, well, I'm going to be naming three games, 
that I that are honorable mentions of games that have weird names, but are actually really good. But unfortunately, I don't have them, so this time around, I'm just gonna be mentioning them because I have played them before, either at like a friend's house or like an emulator or any type of thing like that. So anyway, let's get it started. Now this game I'm going to be mentioning right here is called Ninja Baseball Batman. Okay, so, yeah, as you can tell, this title is pretty damn silly. Like, first of all, it's Ninjas, Baseball, and Batman. And when I first heard this, I actually thought this was like Batman is in like the Dark Knight type of Batman, but no, basically it's a beat em up game that was only released in the arcade, unfortunately, but it, but my god, this game was fucking epic though for what it was. Like basically you're like a bunch of like ninja looking baseball player type people and you have bats and you beat the hell out of each other. And it, it like I, when I played a ROM of it, cause, cause I never played it on the actual arcade unfortunately. But it was fucking fun though as hell. But like I've said, <laughs> the name it's fucking weird though. It makes you think of a whole lot of shit comes in your mind. It's just like, okay, so we got ninjas and then we got baseball and then we got Batman. And that's like three most random things that you can ever throw in together, and yet it pretty much has not a whole lot to what you would suspect it to be, but Hey, it's actually a great fucking game and I really wish they would port this game to like a console or something, because that would be nice. But Oh well, maybe they might sometime in the future, who knows. Alright, and this one right here, oh this is going to be a fucking weird one, I can tell you that, is that, for one, everything that I'm going to be saying about this is goddamn weird, and that game happens to be Swagman on the PS1. Okay, for one, the cover is fucking weird, the title is weird, it, just the game itself is just so fucking weird, and my god, like... I've, I don't think I've ever seen anything that this looks so weird at one time, and to be honest with you, because I, like, I, I don't have this game, but I played it on an emulator once, not too long ago, because I actually heard about it in a gaming group that I'm in, and all I can say is that it's actually quite good, like, I was surprised, like, I thought this game was going to be, like, a shitty game, just because, well, for one, it's not very well known, and then the second part is just the fact that well, just look at the goddamn cover. It just doesn't look promising. And this, the name, like, swag as in, you know, that stupid, like, yellow shit. Like, okay, now, dude, I'm gonna be honest here. I find that shit really fucking annoying. And and I'm sorry if I'm making fun of you people that that are happen to be watching this video that like that type of thing. But that's just who I am. I just can't fucking stand it. And just with that type of shit, and then with having the word man at the end of that, it's just... It's another, it's saying the same concept of Ninja Baseball, Batman, whatever, it's like, a whole lot of shit goes in your mind thinking that it's gonna be this one thing, but it's, like, completely different, and, to be honest you, I, I can't really say too much about this game just because, one, I didn't really play it a whole lot, but from what I have played of it, it, it was pretty interesting, uh, I can tell you that, and, and hopefully if I ever do get a copy of this game, I probably may actually do a review on it at some point, who knows. But yeah, that's why I'm not going to say a whole lot about it in all this type of shit, but yes. All in all, it's just fucking weird as shit, and it's actually worth playing and worth checking out. It's kind of odd. Oh, and also another thing is, I'll have to mention with this is that, that uh, fucking, what's his face, uh, Metal Jesus Rocks actually uh, suggested this game in one of his PS1 videos that he made, so I just thought I might as well throw that out there. Alright, now the last game, with the weirdest name ever, and it's on the most weirdest system ever. And oh my god, I, it's just like probably like the best game out of them all. Yeah, oh my god, it just I get shivers every time I mention this game. But anyway, the game is called The Flowers of Robert Maplethorpe on the CDI. Yeah, that is some epic shit right there. Yeah, in case you're wondering, yeah, I'm just messing around with you guys. That game probably sucks, and from what I've known about it, and also it's on the CDI, like, there's fucking nothing on that. Anyway, that was just more mainly as a troll. Here's the real other one that I'm talking about. Alright, so now for the real last one that I'm going to be mentioning. It's actually on the PS1, again, and it was actually a game that was only released in Japan, unfortunately. And it's also, like, rare as fuck, so it's going to cost you an arm and a leg just to get it. But, I have played an emulator of it, again, and, well, it was awesome, and the name of it, well, not just the name of it, it's fucking weird, but even the game itself is too. Well, it's more like just an acid trip, but, anyway, in case you don't know what game I'm talking about, it's LSD Dream Emulator on the PlayStation 1. Now, 
For one, the first thing that comes in your head is, well, is this game going to be about a drug? Well, it's not really about a drug. It's more like a game where you're dreaming and... You're basically dreaming like a fucking acid trip, I swear to god, like, this game it will make you trip balls, or it can, it, this game can actually be kind of scary at some times, and it's actually a very interesting game, and I remember a long ass time ago when I first, like, heard about it, I thought it was really cool, and not a lot of people have heard about it, but now I think it's actually starting to get the recognition that it deserves so almost, because, I mean, it's getting more up there. Because I know a lot of people have done a little bit of Let's Plays on it, which is pretty cool. I would like to do one myself at some point, but... I don't know if I'd be able to do that, but maybe we'll, maybe later we'll, uh, during on the year uh, I might do that, but who knows. Anyway, I, anyways, yeah, that, that game name, fucking weird as hell. Like, as you can tell, well, not just even the name, but even the game itself, like I said, it's just fucked up shit beyond belief. And my god, it's just, wow. <laughs> like, you really need to fucking play it to see what it really is, and not just only that, but really though, like... <laughs> LSD, <laughs> like, <laughs> my god, like, no wonder why this game was only in Japan, because it's all fucking weird shit, like, that, that's gonna be expected. And by the way, that's just a joke, I'm just kidding. I, I, I actually know that there's a lot of weird shit, like, all over the place, even if it's in Japan, Canada, US, and fuck, even England, for all we know. But, anyway, that's the all I have to say about this video, so, I hope you enjoyed my list of shit, of weird names, of great games that was a response to um games of war and hope you liked it and thank you for watching and commenting